Godzilla. This is an emergency. All stations position red. Godzilla alert level three. Set system with full 60 rounds of paralyzing missiles. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and is voted for by you guys in last week's poll in the lead up to Godzilla vs Kong. Today, we're going to be exploring Mecha Godzilla to help us better understand the current state of the MonsterVerse. If you're new to the channel, I actually have a massive Godzilla MonsterVerse playlist going over most of the creatures we've seen so far, which I'll be leaving a link to in the description, so don't forget to check that out after this video. At last, we have it now. A robot to kill Godzilla. Godzilla has faced off against many different giant monsters over the years, but none quite like Mechagodzilla, a giant robot designed with the specific purpose of destroying him. Whether he's called the bionic monster or Kiryu, piloted by a person or alien, Mechagodzilla is one of Godzilla's most formidable foes. First appearing in 1974's Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, franchise creator Tomoyuki Tanaka said that the character was inspired by the Mecha, or giant robot anime genre, which was booming at the time of the film's production, and the Mechani Kong character from King Kong Escapes. Interestingly, the film not only introduced Mechagodzilla, but it also marks the first film appearance of the monster King Caesar. Initially, Toho planned to introduce a robot character named Garugan, but the character was eventually reworked into Mechagodzilla. Special effects director Teruyushu Nakano stated that Mechagodzilla's original design incorporated steampunk elements, while mixing in playtimer designs from the Middle Ages. Meanwhile, Nakano's assistant, Koichi Kawakita, created and named this first version of Mechagodzilla's weapons. Koichi was chosen for this task because he was a huge Mecha fan, and Toho felt that he was the best man to tap into that market. And tap he did. Under the assistant's supervision, Mecha Godzilla was given the ability to launch missiles from his fingers, knees and toes, and develop the rainbow-coloured space beams that shoot out of his eyeballs. In 1974's Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, he first appears in a Godzilla disguise and descends from Mount Fuji. Immediately, he begins destroying cities and confusing the humans who had started to look at Godzilla as their friend. The real Godzilla then appears and engages him in combat, revealing Mechagodzilla's true titanium form, and it's not until later that we eventually discover that he'd been created by the Black Hole Planet 3 aliens to destroy Godzilla and recolonize Earth for themselves. Prior to Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, there was Godzilla vs. Megalon and Godzilla vs. Gigan, which both received mixed reviews. To combat this negative reception, the production company decided to switch up the formula a bit with future stories, which ultimately paid off. The movies that followed were noticeably darker than previous Godzilla franchise films. For example, the second Mechagodzilla film, Terror of Mechagodzilla, features a plotline where a woman named Katsura Mufune has been cybernetically connected with Mechagodzilla after being experimented on as a child. The human protagonist, Akira Ichinose, ends up falling for Katsura and hesitates to kill Mechagodzilla for fear of losing his love, forcing Katsura to shoot herself to shut Mechagodzilla down. Regardless of the change in tone, every iteration of Mechagodzilla essentially features him as a mecha doppelganger of Godzilla. However, his origin story has changed a few times. Though he was initially introduced as an alien, most other versions of him were created by humans. In the Heisei era 1993 film Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, he's powered by a nuclear reactor and was created by the United Nations Godzilla Countermeasure Center. 
He's also referred to as Super Mecha Godzilla instead, as this version was created from salvage parts of Mecha King Ghidorah, who was introduced in the 1991 Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah film. He's reconstructed again in Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, before another appearance as Kiryu, the Mecha Godzilla incarnation from the 2002 film Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla. Kiryu was a cyborg created by the anti-Megalosaurus force, built around the original Godzilla skeletal remains. The robot was then injected with cloned DNA from Godzilla, creating a unique symbiosis. Because of this unique process, this version of Mecha Godzilla has a fun twist. Kiryu has Godzilla's spirit within him awakened by the real Godzilla's rules, causing him to break free of his human pilot's control and refuse to fight against Godzilla. There's also a few other times that Mecha Godzilla appears throughout the franchise. He pops up in the anime trilogy that began with Godzilla Planet of the Monsters, this time as a mecha created by both humans and aliens. Of course, there are also various cartoon versions like Chibi Mecha Godzilla and video game appearances. Mecha Godzilla also appears in both the Ready Player One book and film adaptation, facing off against the Iron Giant, which, in addition to his incredible filmography, have helped guarantee his place in the pop culture lexicon. Though he's had many different forms and backstories, Mecha Godzilla's general personality is pretty consistent. He's a monster terminator, a giant machine with the primary goal of destroying Godzilla. However, even when he's supposedly under the control of the Black Hole Planet 3 aliens, or a human pilot, he usually has some sense of autonomy. The Kiryu incarnation has the most will, since the spirit of Godzilla is within him. Not only does he reject his pilot's controls at certain points, but he also actively decides to join forces with Mothra in Godzilla Tokyo SOS. It's also important to note that most versions of Mecha Godzilla are made of materials like space titanium or nanometal, and will have a special diamond coating or laminated heat resistant armor that can render many of Godzilla's attacks useless. His abilities differ depending on which series he's in. The first iteration, the Showa Mecha Godzilla, used a whole lot of missile and beam attacks like the cross attack beam. His head could also spin around a full 360 degrees and generate an electromagnetic force field that could repel any attackers called the Defense Neo Barrier. He can use various other shock attacks, including the Shock Anchor, which fires harpoons of electrical charges into an enemy, and the G Crusher, which is powerful enough to paralyze Godzilla temporarily. He's also been shown wielding rail guns, a giant anti beast drilling device, blade launchers, and hyperlancers. It's worth mentioning that most iterations of Mecha Godzilla can fly, with jets located either in his feet or in a jetpack type mechanism on his back, enabling him to perform aerial attacks that give him a unique advantage against his adversaries. Like his abilities, Mecha Godzilla's weaknesses also depend on which movie we're watching. In many of them, an attack to the head can completely destroy the cyborg, with Mecha Godzilla shutting down if the cybernet control receiver located on his neck is severely damaged, or if he has the misfortune of having his head removed. In the Heisei era, hand-to-hand -hand combat is considered Mecha Godzilla's main weakness, which is funny because he's a pretty good brawler in his other appearances. Certain attacks can also leave Mecha Godzilla vulnerable when he uses them. The Mega Buster, a laser beam that shoots from Mecha Godzilla's mouth and is as powerful as Godzilla's atomic breath, can cause him to overheat and render some of his attacks unusable. But the attack that will leave him wide open is his final move, the Absolute Zero Cannon. First introduced with Kiryu, the cannon fires out of Mecha Godzilla's chest and has the ability to freeze a target in its tracks, like literally freeze it by making an enemy's temperature go all the way down to absolute zero, causing all of the target's atoms to cease movement. The only problem is that the absolute zero consumes almost half of his energy, so if he uses it, he can only remain in battle for another hour or two before he shuts down, making accuracy a necessity. While the move isn't powerful enough to kill Godzilla, it did give him a huge gaping chest wound in Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. Interestingly, budget limitations can also have an effect on Mechagodzilla. After the Mecha got wrecked in Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, the mechanics tasked with repairing him decided that the Absolute Zero was a bit too expensive. Instead, they replaced it with the Type 4 Triple Hyper Mesa Cannon. Still a pretty badass weapon, but nowhere near as powerful as the Absolute Zero. The Mecha is out of the bag. After leaked images from a convention showed new toy lines that featured Mecha Godzilla, Adam Wingard, the director of Godzilla vs. Kong, posted a photo of him with one of the figurines, confirming what we'd all anticipated. Eagle-eyed viewers may have also noticed that he briefly appears in the various trailers a few times. So far, it seems likely that the new movie will lean into the man-made Mecha Godzilla, and not the he-came-from-space narrative. 
The recent Mechagodzilla Playmates toy description reads that Mechagodzilla was created in secret to destroy Godzilla and end the reign of monsters. As I've said a few times in the past, I think that this new film will be a mashup of the 1962 Toho classic King Kong vs. Godzilla and the 1974 Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, with the two briefly fighting each other before deciding to team up against the mechanical abomination. But there will also definitely be elements of its sequel, which, as mentioned earlier, featured Super Mechagodzilla. We know Jonah salvaged one of Ghidorah's heads from King of the Monsters, and his motivation seemed to align with that of the secret organization that creates the Mecha from salvage parts of Mecha King Ghidorah to defeat Godzilla and his kind. Hopefully his appearance in Godzilla vs Kong will lead to more movies dedicated to different versions of him in the future. After all, he's considered one of Godzilla's main rivals, so it would make sense for the Monsterverse to give him time to shine fully. And since Mechagodzilla is appearing in the new film, who's to say that there can't be a Mechani Kong appearance in the future also? With all that being said, I'd love to hear your thoughts and theories about the upcoming movie, so don't forget to share these in the comments below. Thanks to everyone who voted in last week's poll. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content, and if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.